the Real Estate You podcast with Letty Ann. Welcome back to Real Estate You with Letty Ann. We have Wes Hodgson with us today. He is the president and director of operations at Midwest Radon. Welcome, Wes. Letty Ann, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we are going to talk with Wes today about radon, radon gas. What is it? Why is it important to test for it? And um, so tell us, what is radon gas? Where does it come from? And what effect does it have on us? Radon gas, um, it's a soil gas. It comes from the soil. Um, it's naturally occurring. Basically what it is is the breakdown of uranium in the soil. Um, as uranium goes through its radioactive decay, it becomes a gas gets drawn up into homes and uh, coupled with the fact that you have a roof over your head, that gas can begin to concentrate. Um, it's a carcinogen, uh, second leading cause of lung cancer next to the cigarette smoking, uh, number one leading cause of lung cancer for non-smokers. Um, it's a prevalent find uh, here in Kansas City and the surrounding areas, uh, roughly half of all homes test high for radon. And so you said uh, lung cancer? How do they um, how do they determine that it comes from radon? I'm curious. Well, there's there's no autopsy um, to uh, it's not like um, uh, when you do an autopsy after someone passes from lung cancer uh, caused by cigarette smoking. It's a pretty easy find. Um, it's what this is is mild radiation exposure. Um, the uh, the risk is that you breathe radon in and it goes through a radioactive decay inside of your lung, which releases um, polonium that attaches itself to your lung tissue. Um, that happens over time, obviously polonium, uh, highly radioactive, it's what's used in uh, nuclear bombs and nuclear power plants. Um, it's not good for, for your body. Um, and so there again, the if not caused by cigarette smoking, the prevailing thought is that you've had obviously exposure to something um, that would have caused the, the lung cancer. And if you have sec, you know, uh, decayed radioactive products on your lung tissues, that becomes the issue. So being that radon gas, as you said, comes up from out of the ground, uh, are there higher concentrations of that gas in the lower level or in the basement than there would be in other rooms in the, in the house? Yes, yeah. Radon is heavier than air. So generally speaking, your basement levels or the lowest level of the building is going to be where you find the highest concentrations. However, um, we get into the dead cold of winter and the dead heat of summer. The times of year where your HVAC system is highly active tends to draw radon from the lowest level and then distribute it throughout the entire home. Um, so oftentimes, uh, in the in the heating months, you might see less of a difference between the first floor of the building and that lower basement area. But yes, generally speaking, it's going to be highest in the basement. Yeah, that makes complete sense. So as a real estate professional, of course, we always encourage our buyers to do uh, perform a radon test. Um, it's, it's up to them whether they want to or not. It's sort of like a pest sure. inspection or a termite inspection uh, up to the buyer. And, um, you know, a lot of people have never heard of radon gas. So we try, you know, my explanation is it's, it's a gas that comes out of the ground. Um, and you've helped me a little bit more with uh, how to explain that. But I simply say it's not, you know, in the best interest for your health. And if you want to see if radon gas is uh, at a level, you need to find out what level it is. <clears throat> I always say four, four points, but... <clears throat> It's not really points. So the the EPA level is what four? I say points to people, but pico curies per cubic liter. Oh, help us all. That's why I say points. <laughs> so yeah, pico puke per copa kiba. Yes. So I say go. if it's four or above, you you might want to consider uh, mitigate uh, remediating mitigating so mitigating. Thank you. mitigating right so the difference between mitigating mitigate is to lessen remediate is something one would do if they had mold you'd want to get rid of it remediate it completely is that right Wes yeah within the radon industry it's standard that we call it mitigation okay. yeah there is no such thing as no radon radon exists everywhere on earth even outdoor air levels are roughly 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 
but you're exactly right. When you, when you install systems in homes, the idea is to lessen the amount to well below, hopefully, that, uh, that threshold of 4.0 points or peak acuities per <laughs> cubic liter. Uh, that's, that's the reason. It's, uh, it's such a cute uh, name, but I simply say points. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm going to let you explain the, the testing. Um, do you, does Midwest Radon also mitigate or, or do you simply do the testing? We do anything and everything radon. Um, have been for about 33 years. Um, and yeah, it always starts with the test. Um, there's Can you a number of ways. Yeah. Okay. Go Please ex explain the testing process, uh, to us, Wes. Uh, I, I'm somewhat, you know, I'm familiar because we do the testing for those who are purchasing homes. I don't do it, but we call sure. Midwest radon. And, um, then what does that look like to the consumer? If they were wanting to get a radon test, how long does it take? What does it cost for the test? Sure. Um, so generally speaking with real estate inspections, uh, the recommendation is to do a short-term test performed with what they call a continuous monitor. It's an electronic device. Um, basically a professional like myself or someone else comes out, takes a few minutes really just to set that device up. Back to the earlier question, it's usually going to be set up in the lowest usable space uh, or livable space. So in most homes, particularly in Johnson County, uh, that's going to be down in the basement. Uh, the device is then left there for two days, a minimum of 48 hours. Um, and we come back and retrieve that device uh, using electronic devices. Uh, most professional testers are able to provide you uh, instant results or at least provide a, a written test report the day of or, or shortly thereafter picking the device up. Um, there are other methods for testing that don't work well, well for real estate inspections because obviously within that uh, real estate inspection, you're up against a contingency, a deadline uh, to have those inspections completed. Uh, but we find that homeowners sometimes will do long-term testing where they might set up a test device in the home for a few months to a year. Um, Although the recent studies are that the long-term testing and the short-term testing are usually running at about 98% congruency, meaning that 98% of the time, the short-term test is showing you what the long-term test would. I, I never heard that one could do a radon test for months at a time. Uh, can you imagine looking at that data? But I guess that you all you have to do is see the line, right? Uh, low, well, high, you low, don't, high. unfortunately, with those long-term tests, you don't get the hourly data. And that's what's critical for the, you, you, it's what they call an alpha track device. Uh, it's a passive device that you set up in the basement and that gets delivered back to a laboratory for analysis. Um, the nice thing about, and why it's important uh, about these short-term tests done with the continuous monitors is just like you said, we get hourly data. Um, and that's important to confirm that we've got a quality test to make sure that nobody's tampering with the, uh, the testing conditions. <laughs> they didn't crack open all the windows in the basement. So we're testing outdoor air. Do people um, do that? Oh no, do never. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought, I never thought to do that. Oh, wow. That we probably shouldn't let people, uh, yeah, yeah. They, you know, obviously an experienced tester is able to kind of analyze that hourly data. And some of those things are pretty easy to pick up on. Um, you know, it goes for, down uh, to zero for like six hours or something. Right about an hour after everybody leaves the inspections. Yeah. You <laughs> see that the <laughs> levels drop. So, so for real estate inspections, um, which I believe is what we're primarily covering here, the short-term testing done with a continuous monitor is the uh, preferred method it gets us quick results, um, but quick results with quality because we can actually analyze that hourly data and make sure that we have some consistency over that 48 hour period. And as you and I know, it is uh, not the obligation of the seller to treat for or um, mitigate for radon, um, but it is a negotiable item. So if the buyer right. is, uh, you know, if it's uh, 12 points, which is not under the four points that I call it, um, you know, there's active radon present. That's completely up to the buyer whether they want to ask the seller to mitigate the rad radon or they could even share the cost of the mitigation. Um, and things like that. That's right. Yeah, exactly. There is no uh, legislation, uh, at least in our area, that requires a radon test or just as you said, requires mitigation. It becomes, like you said, a negotiable item. Um, not uncommon that a buyer might, might ask for the home to be mitigated um, or at least make it a consideration as part of their negotiations. What's the highest uh, pixel points you've seen? 
in Kansas City, about 280 Pika Curies. What? Uh, 280 yeah. in one house? Oh, yeah. What? Um, oh, my gosh. The I, One time that test came in at 21, and I that was the highest I've seen, 21. Uh, not yeah. that I freaked out because, like, it's it's okay. We, it's manageable. You know, it's up That's to right. you. It's fine. I don't freak out. It's fine. But I might freak out at the 280. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, am I glowing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, so 280, it's not uncommon through our office to see levels in excess of 20. Um Honestly, we probably see test level in that range once or twice a week, if not more. Um, uh, maybe once a month, a uh, couple times a month, we'll see something approaching 50 peak curies. Several times a year, we'll see stuff up closer to 100, and then uh, yeah, about 280 peak curies. Um, when you say times, ti times of the year, is that seasonal? So, does that have to do with being seasonal or just a uh, happenstance? Well, those levels definitely have nothing to do with seasonal fluctuations. If it was 280 in the middle of winter, it's going to be high regardless when you test it. But no, it is a good question um, because we do see seasonal fluctuations in a lot of houses. Not every house, it's not a, a de facto, but certainly a fair amount of homes will test slightly higher during the heating season, November to March. Anytime we close the house up for extended periods of time and we crank up that HVAC system to warm the home, um, that contributes to negative pressure or suction inside of the home, mm -hmm. starts pulling in more radon from the soil. Um, so in fact, EPA's guidance even suggests that the ideal time to test to identify the highest potential is November to March. Okay. Um, let's talk about the mitigation process <clears throat> in new homes. Most new homes now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, most new homes now are plumbed for a radon system. Can you tell everyone what that means? Yeah, um, more and more. Uh, and in fact, there's a few jurisdictions around our, uh, around our region here that require, but more and more builders are pre-installing the soil vent pipe or the radon pipe. Um, basically what that is, it's a pipe that extends from underneath the concrete floor in the basement. Um, that pipe is then routed up in some fashion through the home and exits out the roof line on the outside on the roof. It ends up looking just like another plumbing vent pipe or a, a sewer vent pipe. Um, it's great. It's great that they're doing that for two reasons. One is that in itself, that passive pipe could be beneficial and help reduce radon levels. You still want to do a radon test to confirm that. If the test at that point came back high, fortunately, it's pretty easy to mitigate. Um, and the issues of aesthetics and pipes on the outside of homes and things like that is, are already dealt with. It's as easy as getting in the attic space, installing a fan, an active fan on that pipe. Usually a few other components are needed, uh, things like uh, sump covers. Um, if there hasn't been an electrical connection made in the attic, obviously that's gonna be necessary to power the fan. But uh, there's a, a benefit to the cost savings, obviously, for the, for the purchaser. It's, it's much cheaper to install the fan than it is to retrofit an entire system through the home. Um, but as I mentioned, those questions of aesthetics, which I think are important, um, have already been addressed. Uh, without that pipe in place, we're left looking for a way to install that piping basically in the same fashion, getting a pipe from the basement routed in some fashion to the roof line. And um, have you seen that some people are very particular, if it's not new construction that's already been plumbed, where the pipe goes? I mean, you, I've, I've had buyers oh, yeah. go and say, no, I want to be there. I want to say, oh, I don't want it on this side of the house. I don't want the pipe to show on the outside of the house. What, uh, what stories and um, experiences have you had there with installing a mitigation system uh, with a buyer present and they very particular about where it goes? Well, you're exactly right. As you might imagine, buyers and homeowners themselves are always gonna be concerned about that question. Um, nobody wants to buy a house and show back up to move in and have a nice two-story pipe at the front corner of the home that they see every time they pull up to it. Um, so it's certainly a, um, a subject that's worth spending a little bit of time on. Um, there, in most homes, you can find a reasonable pathway either on the outside, hopefully in a way that's hidden from the streets so we don't have to see this, this system, or in a lot of houses, quite honestly, about 70% of the systems that we install out of our office are interior routed systems where this pipe gets routed up through the interior of the home. So no different than that pre-existing builder installed pipe. The only thing that's visible is another vent pipe up on the roof line. Uh, so it's not a standout item. And yes, the, um, uh, the homeowners and the buyers 
almost always are going to be a little concerned with that. Obviously, people selling their homes tend to not be as concerned because they don't get to live with the radon system at the end of the at the end of the closing. So. Exactly. And I've seen you're very savvy at placing the interior pipe uh, so only the exit vent on the roof is seen. Uh, even when I've, I've shown homes, I've seen little, I also call them trap doors, although they're not, but just something in the sheetrock. And you know it's a little bit of a door. And I open it up and right there's a little radon. Because uh, when you have a mitigation system installed, what do you call the little... Uh, it looks like a test tube, but it, it's actually monitoring, you know, so you know it's working, right? What do you yeah, call that? it's just a monitor. It's a monitor, it's just, yeah. It's but that's that's after the system's installed, so it's cute. I open the little door. I'm like, oh, that's the radon system. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it's, in fact, in the state of Kansas and uh, nationally, the EPA uh, standards require that that little monitor be mounted. And the reason for that is because oftentimes the fan's not, particularly on an interior routed system, the fan is gonna be up in the attic space. So it's difficult to know if the fan is operational or not if you didn't have that little monitor. Um, and, um, and they're very quiet, the systems are quiet. So that's again, part of the reason to have the monitor and, and be able to make sure that the fan is operational. So Wes, we have just a few minutes left. Um, just like carbon monoxide, radon gas is, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't see it. And Correct. would someone have an indication of, of maybe we have radon or is, is it really just best to simply call Midwest Radon and, and get tested? There is no way to know unless you do a test. Okay. Yeah, even uh, I get that question a lot about, well, do my neighbor was high, does that mean I'm high? No, the only way to know uh, is to do a test in the home. And uh, what's the approximate cost for testing? Well, it can vary. Um, uh, testing, generally speaking, I, as, a, as a rough number, I like to say, give or take 100 bucks to do a radon test um, in a home. Um, out of our office here in the Johnson County area, the testing is $120. Um, Does it depend on the size of the home or the size doesn't matter? Size doesn't usually matter. Now, if you get to a home that literally the basement footprint itself is larger than 4,000 square feet, you might need more than one radon test deployed out evenly in that space. And that makes um, sense. It's real, yeah. You know, for us, it's really more of an issue of proximity and how far away from the office, <laughs> uh, you know, if I'm driving to um, travel time. To liber yeah, if I'm driving to Liberty or up to St. Joseph, obviously there's going to be some, some fees beyond just the standard testing fee. Okay, let's talk mitigation. What's an approximate cost? And this might be based on square footage, I'm not sure, to mitigate the home for radon. What's an approximate cost there? Well, it actually not so much, it can be based on square footage. Again, when you get to an extremely large footprint home, that can be a factor. It's really more of an issue of the construction and the age of the home that, that kind of uh, dictate the cost of the mitigation. And again, generally speaking, older homes, anything built prior to about 1972 can be slightly more challenging um, to because, mitigate. Because? Sub-slab conditions. Okay, uh, gotcha. Uh, anything built later than 72 in Johnson County has a layer of gravel underneath that concrete floor. And kind of back to that earlier discussion, the fan system is designed to pull air from underneath the home and exhaust it. Um, when a home doesn't have that layer of gravel or a porous aggregate underneath the concrete floor, it can present some challenges in moving air and, and mitigating. And so t generally speaking, older homes can be a touch more expensive. Certainly homes that are built over open earth crawl spaces um, are always gonna be expensive or more expensive, I should say. Um, but as a general rule, the average cost um, on the low side of things kind of starts in roughly the you know, $750 to $800 range to install a radon system. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but of course, if you get into some of these old houses or homes built over crawl space, it's not uncommon to see the cost of a mitigation system start ramping up to $1,500, $1,600, even to $2,000 or more again, just based on the construction of the home. Makes um, sense. Important, one thing I probably would like to add to that is that it is important, um, uh, whomever installs that system provide a guarantee for radon reductions um, and retesting to confirm that the system's working. Uh, the existence of a radon system in a home is not a definitive indicator that the, that the radon levels are being reduced. And so kind of to summarize all of those topics together, 
even when you're looking at a home for purchase that has an existing radon system, still highly recommended to do a radon test just to ensure that that system is providing reductions. Oh, that makes that makes uh, such good sense because oftentimes we'll see the pipe and go, oh, they already have a radon system installed, but who's really checking to see if it's working? And just to reiterate right. what you said, be sure the company who's installing, and hopefully it's Midwest Radon, be, be sure that they are guaranteeing the reduction of uh, gases, correct? That's correct. Not just guaranteeing the price, not the guaranteeing price. radon reductions. Radon yes, reduction. Important. And um, the second thing you said uh, was just because there's a system doesn't mean it's working. That's so right. Be sure to so have have uh, call Midwest Radon and be sure that, th or if you if you're listening across the country, uh, call your local uh, radon company and ask ask questions, right, to get those answers. That's right. Good. Wes Hodgden, thank you so much for being here today. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. Hodgden? You're doing it right, Lydia, and yes. Right. And he is, of course, the president uh, and director of operations at Midwest Radon. So if you have any questions about radon, please contact Wes, and uh, he's, he'll be happy to answer those questions for you. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it, and we'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. And uh, for those for of you, me. absolutely. And for those of you watching, we appreciate your interest. And if you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Real, uh, that would be Letty Ann and Associates Real Estate Services. Uh, we welcome being your resource for all things real estate. Until next time, we'll see you on the next episode.